let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Everywhere I go, oh, I'm going to let it shine. Oh, I said everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Gave it to me, all right. I'm gonna let it shine. Oh, said Jesus gave it to me. And I'm gonna let it shine. Jesus gave it to me. I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Let it shine. Oh, precious Lord, we, a few of your children, have gathered on this morning to say thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we thank you for all that you've done, doing, and the expectation of what you are going to do. We thank you for this opportunity to come together with one another to explore and share your word, Lord God. We thank you for this opportunity to receive your word from up on high. And Lord, we just ask in the name of Jesus that <coughs> we uh, that you allow us truth coming out of your word, yeah. that you give us revelation, Lord God, and the meaning of your word that we might understand it and be able to apply it to our lives. Yeah. Lord, we want to continue to lift up Sister Roxanne and yes, Reverend Roseman in yeah. prayer, yeah. as well as all those, Father God, who yeah. um, are <clears throat> under the sound of my voice and those who are out on Zoom and then those who are not able yeah. to join on this morning. Continue to place a hedge of protection around them. Lord, those who are on their way, give them travel and grace that they might arrive there safely. This is the prayer of your humble servant on this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, this morning we are in the second unit of uh, this quarter, the third of a three-unit series that started last week with um, Reverend Hill covering God Provides Quail and Manna. Amen, amen. Uh, this week we are coming from the 17th chapter of Exodus mm -hmm. uh, with a focus on verses 1 through 7 and a topic or subject of God Provides Water from a Rock. Amen. 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 Uh, and as we get into this lesson this morning, uh, it's something to note, and that is this lesson is going to deal with thirst and <coughs> physical thirst is a picture of spiritual thirst. All right. Amen. Amen. So <coughs> when we sense uh, spiritual thirst, we will do just about anything to get that That's right. when we are walking by faith and not by sight. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And spiritual thirst, it's a, it's a normal thing. It should be a normal thing. But it becomes abnormal when that thirst begins to transition over to earthly things. Okay. Things like immoral sex, things like uh, fame and power, Come on, things right. like money, mm -hmm. possessions that we have, things of uh, uh, position, which in the church oftentimes happens. Yeah. Folks want to be next to the man, yeah. the man being the pastor mm -hmm. or the uh, as uh, associate minister. Mm -hmm. You know, when we began to thirst after those things, then it throws us off of where our focus ought to be. Yeah, and our focus needs to always be and remain on things above, amen? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> things in the heavenly places and not things of this earth. And so <coughs> we want to keep that in mind as we get into this lesson and also as we think about uh, a, a, a word, a word, a word, provision. Okay, we want to 
think about those things. And not only as we get into this lesson, but when we leave here, because we are going to see that memory is short-lived. Hmm. Hmm. Amen? Yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, having said that, uh, if someone could read for me verses 1 through 3. And this is not a long lesson, but it, there are some topics that come out of this lesson yeah. that we can get into and have a good time with this Amen. morning. Amen. That's right. Amen. Amen. Good morning, First Lady. Hey, good morning. You look so beautiful. Hey, do we got another one? Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Your smile just radiates the entire <laughs> church. Sorry. Amen. I forgot. We're on YouTube. <laughs> yes, we are. We have a pause, look like, though. It says, but is it pause? Oh, it's running. Hey, Amen. Let me just say to all of you out there in virtual land, uh, on YouTube joining this morning. May God bless you and continue to keep you. We miss you and we are so looking forward to when we can all come together again. Amen. Amen. We're praying for you. Amen. Go ahead, sister. Okay, Jennifer. so we got Exodus 17, 1 through 3. And the congregation of the children of Israel, a journey from the wilderness of sin after their journeys according to the commandment of the Lord and pitched in Ripidim mm -hmm. and there was no water for the people to drink My Lord. so wherefore the people did chide with Moses and they said give us water that we may drink and Moses said unto them uh, why chide with me wherefore do ye tempt the Lord and the people thirst there for water and the people murmured against Moses and said Wherefore is that thou hast brought us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? My Lord, my Lord. Let's, let's look at, let's look at verse 1. And all the congregation. Now, I believe I heard Reverend Hill say last week, and I'm paraphrasing, uh, something to the effect that Serving the Lord comes with pain? Was it something like that? Or is it difficult? It's not easy. Yeah, it's not easy. Serving the Lord? Yeah. Hey, amen. And it's such a, a true statement because here, and I believe you also pointed this out last week, all the congregation, we have two to three million oh, yeah. Israelites yeah. on this Exodus journey. That is a lot of folk. And to move two to three million people is a monumental task. And so we have all of these folk yes, who are journeying, and here they have left from the wilderness of sin, and it says after their journeys. So they have had multiple stops Mm -hmm. that is being called journeys yes, and with each of these stops they've had some challenges already okay if you if you're looking for what these journeys are you can look in the, in the 33rd chapter of numbers Amen. and it lists each step of the way from the time that they left Egypt all the way to the point to where they made it up to Mount Sinai Okay, uh, and it's actually an interesting read, and even when you begin to look at the chronology of the timetable that it took, uh, but just imagine two to three million people, they are walking mm. this journey. Now, and, 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 and I could not find, but they didn't wear short pants back then. They didn't have on short sleeve shirts. The women were fully covered mm -hmm. during this time. My Lord. Uh, they had donkeys and uh, cattle with them. They had water pots mm -hmm. with water in it with them. 
they had their what meager possessions yeah. that they owned with them. And so can you just imagine how much energy and effort that it takes to move from one place to the other place? Mm -hmm. right there. Yeah. That that in itself is hard. Yes, it is hard. And so here they've come through some journeys, mm -hmm. and then it says according to the commandment of the Lord. So what we're being told with this is <clears throat> that they didn't come here by their own All right. direction. They didn't come here by the direction of who was leading them in Moses, for God gave them the commandment to move <clears throat> uh, as a pillar of a, 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 a pillar of cloud during the day and a pillar of fire at night yeah, when yeah. it moved they then move. they move just like that. when God moves you move just like that right. amen it ain't it ain't because of the leader that he put in place the leader was following God yeah so we need to note right off that it was God who took them to this particular yes, place yes, now uh, refer them and then when they get there there's no water mm. <laughs> if I journey and, 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 and know that when they left the wilderness of sin mm -hmm. to get from the wilderness of sin to refer them it wasn't that that it was that far mm -hmm. but it is a million of you mm -hmm. I mean two to three billion with a whole bunch of stuff a whole bunch of animals and mm -hmm. stuff it's dusty when we say wilderness here, oftentimes it's not uh, trees and forests mm -hmm. and uh, uh, rustling brooks mm -hmm. running through this wilderness. This is barren land. Yeah. This is desert. desert. This is mountainous Come terrain. On, okay. So when we get to Rephidim and there is no water, I'm upset. <laughs> That's enough to be upset about, ain't it? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. But we have to understand that it was God who commanded them to go there. That's right. All right. All right. Trying to teach them something. <laughs> so they are shocked. Hmm. They are surprised. They, they are surprised yes, uh -huh. that there's no water, and, and 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 there's good reason to. Not just that I'm upset, mm -hmm. but water is an essential to life. Yeah. yeah. Over sixty percent of our bodies are made up of water. Mm -hmm. It is water that allows us to the saliva to form in our mouths the tears to form in our eyes it is water that lubricates our joints it is water that fuels us water feeds your spinal cord and your heart over 73 percent of your heart and your uh 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 essential organs mm. is water. Mm -hmm. And so, not only when I get there and see that it ain't no water, but I'm, I, I possibly could die mm -hmm. from dehydration mm -hmm. with no water. Mm -hmm. So, it's an excited state of mind yeah. when you are facing death. Mm -hmm. Okay, But we cannot forget that it was the Lord who commanded us to this yeah, place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as we're going to see uh, that memories are short-lived with these people. Amen? Mm -hmm. Amen. So verse 2 goes in to say, wherefore now that the people have seen that there is no water <laughs> where they've been led to, the people did chide with Moses. In other words, 
complaint. They quarrel. Mm -hmm. They brought some complaints mm -hmm. to Moses and said, Give us water <laughs> that we may drink. Mm -hmm. And Moses said to them, uh, Take that up. <laughs> why are you chiding with me? You need to take that up with the Lord. Why are you <laughs> tempting the Lord? Mm. Okay. Chide. Chide is uh, defined in this text because they're at an excited state, <laughs> feeling like they're about to die. They're on 10. They're and, on 10 and, right there. And, and, and absolutely, they're on a level of 10. And the truth be told, the body was telling them that they were about to die. Yeah. yeah. Then they had already run out of water. So they were in dire need of water. But it was not Moses who took them to this place. Right. It was from verse 1, God who commanded them to this place. And so you want to come at me <laughs> when all I'm doing is exercising what thus says the Lord. I'm just a messenger. What I'm thus doing. says the Lord. Uh -huh. we, have, we have witnessed it. We have seen it actually here in our own church. Yeah. And throughout many churches, you see this and witness it. Uh, uh, the pastor has a vision. Mm -hmm. But we, we haven't been shown his vision. <laughs> you know, God hasn't spoke this into our spirit. So we question the pastor constantly. Uh -huh. And what he may, what he has been instructed and commanded to do. Right, right. But see, God had already gone out, being omniscient, and mapped this thing all out before we even got there. Uh huh. So we have to be mindful, saints. We have to be mindful. And at this point, I, I'll inject here. Now, why are we, why do we need to be mindful? Because Rephidim wasn't the end of the journey. Mm -hmm. Compton, LA, Long Beach, Inglewood is not the end of the journey. But God knows what the end of the journey is. God knows mm -hmm. what the stops are, the journeys are for us along that way. And if we are obedient in what God instructs us to do, then yeah, we may go through some hard times and get and, 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 and end up stopped somewhere to where we are lacking. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. In the, in the church, we may start a building program and we have a sign over here where it's being supported by a building fund and the building fund uh, uh, takes longer mm. to get to the goal than what we projected. We projected 18 months and now we're in month 30 mm. and we ain't there. So now we began to start questioning Again, back to the pastor. What's going on here? You said, no, 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 no. Don't y'all see God moving here? Don't y'all see God moving here? Well, well, Don't well, take well, this well. up with me. Why don't you go and take this up with the Lord? Mm -hmm. I've told you that God has given me this vision. Hey, man. Amen. This is not of my own personal desire. Good morning, brother. Good morning, my brother. Amen. Amen. This is not of me. All right. But yet the people want to chide with Moses. Mm -hmm. And then this is a hard, this is a hard 
statement. This is a hard demand where it says, give us. Hmm. Ain't that something? Give us. Give us. <laughs> give us. Yeah. Right. That we may drink. They didn't say, uh, Moses, can you help us? Or Moses, yeah. is there somewhere else close by that we can get to quick? They demanded right then. Demanded. Mm -hmm. We are an uh, 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 impatient people. We are an unruly people. And what we want, we want it right now. Right. Right now. It's a microwave society. Yes. <laughs> God, God promised me abundant living. And God's dogged, I want to live abundantly right now. Right now. Mm -hmm. I want steaks and crab in my freezer right now. <laughs> Although I ain't worked in six months. Mm -hmm. I want a 2020 uh, uh, Range Rover. Tesla, you, you, you know, but I haven't done any of the things up to this point that would put me in a position to be able to have it. But I want it, and I want it right now. And all I know is that you are the one right in front of me. <laughs> And so I got to bring this to you because you are the one right in front of me. And this is what the children of Israel are doing. But again, it was, it was God who led. It was God who directed this journey to refer them. They do not, we do not know God's way. We do not know God's end game. God hmm. didn't pass these things to They fear God. Too. They fear God more than they fear Moses. The children. Mm -hmm. The children. They they did mm -hmm. having said that, they are in such a state of mind and state of physical need mm -hmm. that even their fear of God has been sort of sidelined hmm. right now. They wasn't, it, <laughs> when we fear God and when we are conscious of God, this, is, this was an unconscious state right now. Mm -hmm. I fear death. <laughs> I fear the circumstance. I fear situation. I fear death right now. Got no water, I hear and I, I love me some God. I do. And I do fear the Lord. Amen. But right now, my consciousness yeah. is dealing with my physical need. Remember when I started out about uh, a physical thirst versus a spiritual thirst, mm -hmm. so, uh, which a physical thirst is... A, a picture of a spiritual thirst. All right. A spiritual thirst is a good thing, is normal, but it becomes abnormal when we allow our thoughts to move from things above to things of the earth. Right. Water, <laughs> possessions, but in this case, water. Yes, sir. Uh, a question I want to ask you said a spiritual thirst. So therefore, tears can be a spiritual thing, and it can be not a spiritual thing. Tears? A tears, yeah. It can be tears. As they relate to water? Yes. Thank you. Tears. Yes. Thank you. So they are dealing, the children now, and as First Lady said, they love God but they are frightened. They're frightened of dying. And so instead of considering those things that God have provided for them in these journeys up to this point, they're only thinking about
the now. Mm -hmm. It's it's almost it's almost as if they 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 they're saying, "What have you done for me lately?" Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. dun, dun, dun. Mm -hmm. And Moses, and when Moses yeah. says straight out to them, "Why are you chiding with me?" Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and why are you tempting the Lord? Moses was the right man for the job. He was. Because, and, and I, I hate to really uh, sort of inject pastors so much now, but, you know, over, over a span of time when you have dealt with a body of folk, sometimes you can become a little short. <laughs> Certain persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it? With, with, with folk. With folk. But this is a good injection because despite our, our chiding with Pastor Kressel mm. at certain moments, right. I have not seen him react in kind. And Moses is a good example of that. God prepared Moses just for this event. Yes, sir. When you think about uh, after he he fled from Egypt and ended up in Midian, here he was in Egypt. He was the man. He was the man. He was the man. Pharaoh. He Pharaoh. held literally life and death in his hands. Yep. Educated, you, you know, good looking from all that I can tell. <clears throat> he was the man. But yet when he made it to Midian, Humbled himself. Mm. Yeah. He went out and tended, flocked the sheep, mm. fetched water. He humbled himself. Mm. His DNA was a DNA of meekness. Mm. And, and meekness is important to have as part of your DNA. Mm. That's right, that's right. And as Christians, my brothers and sisters, it is. It is a journey to get to a place of meekness in our lives. I, wife, I think you can attest to this. I'm a lot meek, more meek today. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you say the wrong thing. <laughs> but it was a journey, a journey for me to get from there yeah. to here. Amen. And when you are faced with adversity, especially from two to three million folk, your your instinct, a lot of our instincts, would be that you coming at me hard like this, I'm oh, going yeah. to react in kind. That's right. But not Moses. For you see, when you're dealing with conflict, a lot of times when you have the love of Jesus in you. All right, amen. And you respond to conflict in a manner that shows the nature of Christ, mm -hmm. then it is going to resolve in a totally different manner mm -hmm. than if you yeah. if you respond in kind. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. See this thing, this thing, this faith walk, this 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 Christian thing Talk about it. when we're talking about abundant life, abundant living, you know, abundant doesn't necessarily equate to material things. Abundance relates to emotional state, how you feel in yeah. your mind, yeah. how you feel in your body. And so this one little piece, meekness, humbleness, contributes toward that abundant living. Uh huh. Because it keeps Talk strife breath. out of your life. Talk and that is what God is looking to provide for us in abundant living. I might not be able to have steak and crab in my freezer. But I'm not going to have worry either because I don't have nothing. 
in my freezer. He has provided for me and mine because I have shown myself worthy. worthy. I have shown myself right. to be obedient. I have shown myself to love the Lord Amen. and to keep my mind focused on him and not all this crap that is going on out here in these streets. I do not want to be like everybody else. That's right. Amen. I want to be like Christ. Right. Amen. 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 So the man who is leading me I am going to uh, not only adhere to his leadership, but I am also going to trust in him because of his trust in the Lord. And then guess what? If it looks as though you have led me to a spot that ain't right, uh -huh. then I'm going to let God deal with you. I'm not going to mess with you. Somewhere in the Bible it says, touch not thy anointed. That's Don't right. it ready? That's right. I'm not going to mess with you, man of God, because I trust in the Lord. But then also, God, uh, uh, where they are, where Moses tell them, or ask them also, why are you tempting the Lord? Okay. Gosh, don't, don't y'all just remember? They ain't been traveling all that long. It's only been a few days since they left the Sea of Wilderness to arrive at Rephidim. It's only been a couple days. That just last week, we learned that God, they were hungry. And God came and provided for them by way of meat. Yeah. Well, on the first night. And then not only did he provide for them with meat, quail, but then to show them that I am your God and I am Yahweh and I will provide for you. I am going to feed you day by day. They just have witnessed this. And this is not the first time that they've had issues with water. Chuck, they, 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 the, where, where were they? In, in Mara? Yeah. yeah. And couldn't drink the water? Because it was bitter? And God told Moses, throw that tree in there? Change the water that it might be drunk. He has shown these people time and time again. But God is our mission. Uh -huh. He knows all and he sees all. That's right. That's you think right. when they uh, ran out of water, because see, they ran out of water before they got to Rephidim. Mm -hmm. It's only been three days. You think they wasn't grumbling and mumbling? You think he didn't hear all this? <laughs> but what God looks for from us is out of our free will yeah. that we love him. Right. That we accept him as being sovereign. Yeah. This is what he's looking That's for. It. And so sometimes when we run into trials of life, sometimes when we run into a referendum experience, it is a test. God is testing you to ensure that not only do you love him, but that you trust him to provide for you. It's not just like this morning. Uh, I, I left the house and I, I, I put like, yesterday I put like three things in, I put too much oil in my car, right? Yeah. And by the time I got to uh, uh, Simply and McKinley, it stopped smoking. Mm. I was like, oh Lord, what do we do? I didn't call nobody but the Lord. He said, pull over, get out the traffic, and let the car cool off. Pop the hood, I checked the oil, I said, ooh, I put too much oil in it. Mm -hmm. I didn't smoke it. Okay. Let it cool off, and then I got to the church. I said, thank you, Lord. I know what nobody but you, you know, that, uh, that brought me, you, you, you know, keep me from having an accident or anything. You know, yeah. I got here straight on I arrived straight. All right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, know, I know there was no, nobody but the Lord to stop that, you know, smoking from even though 
after that cool down and you started going about your way, what did you say? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. You, you know, these, these um, tests that we experience in life, they are not tests to uh, uh, disavow us or um, to discredit us. They are simply tests that will lend itself to humbling us. They are tests to see what's in our heart. See, I preached on last week that God looks inside. That's right. He looks at our heart. We need to take that and look out so that we do not become selfish but selfless. Yeah. So these things are tests to see where our heart mm. lies. That's right. And whether we're going to keep God's commandments or not. You know, God is big on just a few things here. Thou shalt not put any other gods before me. Thou shalt love the Lord your God. Thy God. You shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so out of that love, when we run into uh, I might die moment um, because of no water, then out of that love, my conversation with you ought to be a different conversation. Moving me away from quarreling with you. And the last thing I want to do is tempt God. You think back to uh, Mary's uh, cousin, Elizabeth, and Zachariah, when the angel came and told him that they were going to have a baby. Uh -huh. And Zachariah was struck as a deaf mute. Mm -hmm. He was struck as a deaf mute because he questioned <laughs> God. See, there is a difference between asking a question which is perfectly fine and questioning God because questioning God then is tempting him. How are you going to tempt the creator well, who yeah. created you? Right. The alpha and omega. The way. In other words, <coughs> the one who knows everything from the beginning and the one who already knows the end. How are you uh -huh. going to question him? So we do not want to tempt God. And then verse 3 says, And the people thirsted there for water. And by their thirsted there, this is also placing emphasis on the level of their discomfort. Thirsted in this context, instead of saying that the people were thirsty or and the people needed one, thirsted is increasing this verb showing just how intense yeah. it was at that moment for them. Thirsted. And the people murmured. Again, now they, they're, they're moving beyond just complaining, but they're talking about it. <laughs> they're talking about it. Moses and said wherefore is this that thou has brought us up out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with birth here we go again Any, anybody other than a merciful God <laughs> would probably be like I'm sick of y'all 
<laughs> I'm sick of you. I don't want to be bothered away with you. <laughs> made, me, made me think about the, the, the kings back in the day. With, off with his head. The yeah. Tudors. Yeah. yeah. Because I have shown you and shown you and shown you over and over again. Who was it that led you about in Egypt? Who was it that uh, deployed all the plagues? Who was yeah. it that parted the Red Sea? Yeah. Who was it that turned the bitter water to water that you could drink? Who was it that out of nowhere gave you meat and bread? And here you are again coming at Moses with that same song and dance about same song and dance over and over and over. It wasn't Moses. Y'all been look. When I move, you move. Y'all been watching the same thing I've been watching. Yeah. <laughs> this cloud is in here. It ready to go. We go. This fire at night when it wherever it ready to go. We go. Y'all been watching this, but yet you are questioning Moses on why he didn't brought you somewhere again. <laughs> you were gonna die back in Egypt. You don't remember how bad it was for you back then? <laughs> Boy, I tell you. Hey, that's a you, you know, it, 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 it's, it's, it's rough. It's rough all over. When you're leading a large body of folk. Especially. <laughs> yes, especially. Especially. It's rough. But then verse 4 goes on to say, And Moses cried unto the Lord, saying, What shall I do unto this people? They be almost ready to stone me. I tell you, these folks in Compton, <laughs> they be ready to stone you. Yeah, we got a little Ebonics going there, so I figure this is Compton. <laughs> <laughs> they be ready to, ready to stone, me. stone you. But what they should have been doing is what Moses just did. Cry to the Lord. Yeah. Man can't petition. solve all your problems. Your <laughs> That's right. You, you have to take your problems to the Lord. Have your care. He can solve it better than anybody. And words. When you have a problem, with your brother, let's say when you when you are at aught with your brother, go to him, but then lay it at the altar. Right, that's right. Take it, take it to the Lord. Moses made the right move here. Again, because he was humble and because he was meek, he did not come back at the people. He said these people are crazy. They are crazy. I can't deal with them. I got to take this to the Lord. He can Let the Lord deal with them. He can fight that battle anyway. Lord, tell me. <laughs> you tell me. Because see, I'm, I'm listening to you. I'm following you. I'm being obedient to you. And I know that you are uh, God Almighty. That you have provided for us all, right, all, all right. this way. Mm -hmm. So you tell me how to deal with these folk that are looking to do me harm. Mm -hmm. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death. Thy rock, thy staff, they comfort me. Lord, only you can sit here and tell me how to respond. To an unruly people. These are your people. You chose me. <laughs> you met now nah, I'm just going. You remember hey, when you told me to go down there to Egypt because you've heard their cry. I didn't want to go. I, 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 I stutter. <laughs> I didn't want to go. But I was obedient and I went because I trusted you. So here I am again. These people that you gave me, 
They looking to kill me. <laughs> what is it that I could do? Hey, Greg. Huh? Let me say. Yeah. Uh, so when God chose, he just chose the black woman and the black man and the black little kids. What are you talking about? I said when God chose who? I mean, when God was, uh, you know, like, fought like. You about to ask me something that Pastor got to answer. <laughs> <laughs> The yeah, way you say it? When, when, when God had chose his people, which is just the black man, black woman, and the black boy, black little girl. He didn't choose no other. Oh, no, I, I think he's trying to, okay, I think he's he didn't trying choose to no other, ask no other, uh, uh, the, the race of the Israelites. Israelites. Yeah. He chose only the, only the black man, black woman, black child, and black boy. He didn't choose no other. No, <laughs> no, no, no. The answer is no. Why do you say black man? Where, where do you hear that from? Yeah, you I heard just, that from someplace. I just, I just felt maybe you know he it chose just. Listen, why, why are you call him black though? Huh? Why do you call the children of Israel black? Why? Why did you call them? Because I thought they was all black. Huh? I thought I thought they was all black. I didn't think they was just a, everybody. You know, I just thought it was just tough to know one. No, no, there's not just it, it, these children of Israel are not black folk. Not all just black folk. You, you know, when you when you think about color in, in, in the simple form, right? Now, as you're born, naturally, your mother and father and your grandparents, etc., you take on those 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 DNA traits. So that impacts dark, brown, mm -hmm. light, but also uh, region mm -hmm. takes on color as well. If you Africa is a very hot region, and so you tend to have very dark people. But in Africa, in, in, in South Africa. South Africa. There, 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 there are other colors there than just black, right? Why? Because these colors migrated from other places and began to intermarry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So there's been a whole line of this that have occurred in history that drive the different colors that would be part of this 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 uh, group of folk. Okay, okay. Do those those people do they serve the same God? They worship the same God that we worship. You you. Well, I was about to say, you answer me that all of these this group here serve the Lord, but there are other groups that we'll get to next week. You, you know, that serve a different God. That, that You know, we've heard all the stories throughout yeah. the history of Israel mm -hmm. where God uh, didn't want them mixing with another group of people right, because right. the other group of people were serving fertility gods, et cetera, et cetera. But this group of people, yes, to answer your question. And so here we have the people having um, really come at Moses in a hostile way and Moses crying out to the Lord which is what he should do which is what we should do when we have a problem you, you know when Cheryl gets upset at me she should not take it up with me she ought to go take it up with the Lord speak to the Lord and then see where the Lord moves her and she come and talk to me and she'll probably get a better response and the same way you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I tell you, mm -hmm. see something else. And then, so <laughs> verse five. Yeah, yeah. So verse five, we have the Lord responding to Moses. Right. Oh, good God! Does has God responded to you for anything? We were just talking about this in experiencing God this past week in, in, in Bible, Bible study. study. 
if we've spoken to you. Has God spoken to any of you here? And you know that you know without a doubt that this is God responding to something that you petitioned. I didn't, I didn't answer that during Bible study, but I've experienced it. Uh, sister, you care to, you care to share? There's a lot of times that he uh, answered back to me. When I, uh, when I had my surgery, I asked him to take care of me and put me through it. I came through. Amen.
I am who I am. Uh -huh. They need to understand this. And so I am going to help you here, and I'm going to uh, uh, do this in a manner that the people know that is me operating through you, but I cannot, we, we, we cannot accommodate two, three me. So, get together the elders. These are the leaders mm -hmm. of the tribe because the people <coughs> trust them. The people will believe what they say they have witnessed and bring them with you. Witnesses, when you are deacons, you are learned, you are taught, going through deacon training, mm -hmm. that when you are going out to someone's house and it's a woman, you are to do what? Have someone with you. Have someone with you. Have somebody with you. Yeah. Now, in this particular instance, it is to make sure that you have a witness that, hey, I, I ain't did nothing wrong. We did no, uh, what's his name? Uh, 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 I did no wrong. The brother mm -hmm. got sold. Uh, the brother that got sold? He was slave. Joseph. Yeah, yeah, I didn't do no Joseph. You know, if she said that I did something, something. Yeah, you have to have a person with you when you go to the uh, Lord's Supper. You get someone to go there. You know, like Pastor said, on your own. Yeah, and and God also instructs him to take his rod and then to smoke the river. And verse six goes on to say, "Behold, I will stand before thee. God gonna be on the scene. <laughs> That's something. I will stand before thee there upon the rock of Horeb, uh -huh. and thou shalt smoke smite the rock, and there shall come water out of it." that the people may drink, uh -huh. and Moses did so in the sight of the elders of Israel. Well, when you are as, when you are thirsted and nearing death because of hydration, well, when you get that first case of water, the, 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 the Bible says it's like, it's like honey. It tastes so good. Oh, my, my goodness, it tastes so good. Uh, but, but Moses was obedient and followed the commandments of the Lord again, and he did these things in front of the elders. And the rock, when he smote it, water came rushing out of it as rivers. Here, the rock, my, my Lord, is uh, symbolic of Christ. This, this is uh, uh, emblematic of Christ who gives life. This water that uh -huh. they needed out of being dehydrated was going to give them life. And just as this water is giving them life, so does Christ. The, 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 the Christ who was there in the beginning, the Christ who was with God, and the Christ who is God. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yes, yes. Who is, who is God? Christ who says drink of these living waters. Christ who paid the ultimate price for us to make it to the promised land. Well, and here he was there on the scene as Moses performed this miracle in front of the children of Israel. Christ, the one and only. Well, Christ, well, who is He? Well, well, Christ, well. who is the Rock? That's Amen. Right. Amen. Right. Amen. That's that's exciting. Uh, and then in verse seven, uh, we are given two names uh, for that Moses gave to this place so that the people of Israel would remember uh, this place, would remember their actions. Mm. Uh, the name of Massa and Meribah, contending, mm. quarreling folks. Uh -huh. uh, and so 
my brothers and sisters, just know that we are on a journey in this life. There are going to be stops at each at, at junctures in our lifespan. Right. And so if you would for me, uh, you go home and you think about this. Draw this out on a piece of paper, a line, and put two circles right here. And this circle represents zero. That's your birth. And this circle represents your age, where you are right now. And then think about, at certain junctures, 12, 20, 30, where you may have ran into bumps in the road. You may have run into some challenges on your journey. And then think about what happened that brought you through that. Well, well. Hey, man. And this Amen. will help you get your focus on God. Amen. 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 That's hey, all God right. Bless this. It's all right. It's all right, Brother. All right. Let us let us stand. Uh, next week we are going to be coming from Exodus 17, 8 through 16, where we are now going to be leaving Rephidim and, and headed to Mount Sinai, and we're going to run into some battles on our way there. Um, the first being with the Amalekites. Amen. So if you want to read that in advance, Exodus 17, 8 through 16. Let us look unto the Lord God. We thank you for this word on this morning. We thank you for an opportunity to share with one another. And Lord, as we continue on this journey through life, let us look unto you, Father God. Let us trust that you will provide let us believe, Lord God, and humble ourselves, Father God, in that you have placed that trust in leaders and that we can rely and depend on them and trust in them as well. In the name of Jesus, amen. 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 I